Good morning, everybody. Are you ready for week two of Beach Day? All right. Last week, I showed you these two rows, the house and the, the sky with the birds. Today, we're, I'm not going to show you how to do this one because all it is is squares in between the houses and the waves. Um, originally, I had planned on doing all the tan in one color, but I did switch it up in this row just to give a little bit of contrast. Today, we're going to do the waves. Aren't they cute? If you guys have any problems, questions, or issues with um, any of these blocks or directions, please let me know. I'm not giving you sizes because it's not fair to the designer. You really need to buy the pattern, but it's a really easy pattern. This is not difficult at all. And it's great to get rid of some of your scraps. I mean, it's not a big quilt. It's more of a wall hanging, but you could increase the size and add an inch to every size that you cut and make it a little bit bigger. But it's a fun quilt. Um, I like it. I've used some metallics and things like that that I just had in my stash. All I did was open up a bin which is kind of fun. So let's get to week two. We're going to do the waves. And it's not difficult at all. We're going to do some half square triangles. So all we did is um, draw a line diagonally on our squares. So we have our large blue square and we are going to Put our sand colored square on one corner. And we're going to sew on the line. I usually sew about one thread length on this into the corner just to give it a nice crisp fold when we fold it over. And once in a while, as is the case with this machine, it decides it wants to eat the fabric. But that's okay. We will get it done. So. I hope you guys are enjoying this quilt because I am. I think it's a fun quilt. So now all we're going to do is iron this one over and cut the excess. If you have graph paper, you can really um, increase the size and design it all on graph paper. Or just increase the number of blocks, okay? So for instance, you want to make it longer, wider, just add some more houses, add some more uh, waves, anything on the end, increase the blocks. It's not difficult. Okay, so we've ironed it over and then cut the excess off. Sometimes I don't, but more than not, I do cut the excess off only because when I'm trying to sew this part on or this part on, I don't want the two fabrics possibly moving. Okay, now we're going to do the other two corners. We're going to leave one of the corners open.
You know, with everything all split up between the shop and the house now, which I haven't had in quite a while. I had to bring another machine down to the shop and with my mother-in-law passing, she had a Husqvarna Viking, which is not a machine, one that I'm used to or normally would like, but I had to teach myself how to use it. And that's a learning curve. You're always learning. I mean, even me, I've taught on a lot of different machines, but regularly, I mean, in a pinch, I can show a customer what how to do something on their machine, but I've never actually used a Viking for any length of time. So it's a different one. Finally, got the third corner. It's it's definitely a learning curve, not something I'm used to. You get used to certain machines. Um, and I've always been a brother or a baby lock person. And I'm trying to do something completely different. Now we're just going to iron this one over and cut the excess off. It's definitely a learning curve without a doubt. Not something that I'm used to at all. But I'm getting there. I've been working on it for a few days. And uh, it's coming. Now I'm going to cut the excess of the corner off. All right. Now we've got a rectangle piece of sand. And a blue square again with the line cut off, uh, drawn on the center diagonally. Now, with my, normally I would not do the line because I have a grid glide and I use that normally to um, do my half square triangles. So it just takes out one extra step. But because of the camera, I thought it would be easier for you to see it. There's a lot of half square triangle looks that we do in this one. So there you go. We're going to iron it over and cut the excess. This one's a really easy one. It's probably, um, it's not probably, it definitely is a different way of doing this way, this wave. And all the wave is, is just like a uh, snail trail. If you've ever seen one of those blocks, uh, snail trail, usually I see, you see it in, uh, let's see, storm at sea. So now we've got a blue rectangle and a tan square. Now we're gonna do the same thing. You're just gonna put it off into the corner on the right. So down the line. Guess what I'm thinking? Guess what I got in the mail yesterday? Let's see if I can show you. Super excited. Let's see. Look at look at lucky. The Alaskan rainbow quilt. Isn't it pretty? Yes, it's very much me. I like rainbow, I like primary quilts. I mean, I love teal and blues, but to me, this is the striking quilt. So this is one that I added to my stash and I might have to do it in pre-cuts. Meaning, I think, I'm gonna see if I can do a pre-cut quilt for this, for the shop.
super excited. So now all I've got to do is pine it over and cut the excess. And believe it or not, with the exception of two more pieces we're going to sew, this block is done. Definitely spend a lot more time cutting in this block than you do anything else. I mean, cutting this quilt in general. There's a lot of pieces to cut. And I just eyeball a quarter of an inch. Okay. All right. Now I'll show you what we're doing. That is the block, believe it or not. Oops, wrong way. So all we're gonna do is sew these two pieces together and then sew these two pieces to this one and the block is done. Really simple. It's definitely a different technique or way of putting a wave together, but it works. And the studio at home is coming along very slowly. I still have a ton of boxes, but I have boxes um, in corners and piles now. So now we've got these two pieces together and all we got to do is sew it to this one. Literally, I am just making piles, lots and lots of piles. I'll open a box, find out it's fabric. I have put, I mean, I know you can't tell, but on that side of this Shelby unit, I have started organizing my fabric a little bit. I've gotten bins for kits. Oh, let me tell you, I have a lot of kits. Every time, I mean, I always knew I had a lot of kits because every time a new line comes into the shop, I bought it because I like it. So I would put a kit together. Now, the problem is I haven't really done any of those kits in a very long time. So I have been opening up boxes on boxes of kits and trying to figure out how I am going to organize them. And it's not been good. So I have to, I even bought a label maker and it doesn't work, which really frustrated me because I got a bunch of bins and I was going to put some kits in the bins. But that hasn't worked yet because I can't get the label maker to work right. Here we go. That is our wave. And all you're gonna do is make five waves. I alternated the color. The only thing I would tell you is if you have directional fabric, make sure you lay the directional fabric out when you start to do this block. Because you wanna make sure that you've got all the direction correctly. And it's not a matter of being correct or wrong, or, but, if you if you have the small blue square, let me show you. If you have this square with a directional fabric going this way and this one going this way or this way, you might be a, a little bit not happy with it because it's not um, consistent and it just draws your eye for the wrong reason. So if you do have directional fabric, which I am using a little bit, um, let's see if I can show you a close up. See here, 
This is Uncork, which we had it in the shop and we still have a few small bolts, but everybody loved it. But there's definitely a direction to this fabric. So I had to lay out all of my pieces, making sure the direction stayed the same in all of the pieces. That's the only thing that I need you to be, you know, be aware of. If you don't care, it's not a big deal to you. Just like when I cut this and these, I knew I wanted the direction going this way, not up and down. So yes, you can use your stash and have fun doing it. Um, just make sure you watch what you're doing and see, you can see now that I took the clips out, I am starting to organize little things here and there. It's so fun, but there is my quilt so far. Isn't it pretty? All right, I'm going to get, that's it for today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I've got to post this video and get to work. So I will see you guys later. If you have any questions or comments or have any issues with it, just post them in the comments on my YouTube page and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. All right, everybody. Have a great day.